Okay, so in this video we're going to be building a very easy ball maze augmented reality game. Uh, this can either be made as an app for Android or iPhone, or you can use, um, or you can build it for Google Cardboard and actually play the game through your virtual reality headset. So, first we're going to need uh, Unity 3D. So if you don't have that, you're going to need to download that and open a new project. It should look something like this. Now, go to uh, Vuforia.com and download the um, Vuforia plugin for Unity 3D. And you're going to have to go to your dev portal here. So once you have the um, Vuforia plugin downloaded, you're going to grab the package from your desktop and drag it into Unity. Okay, this might take a minute. Um, yeah, import all this stuff. I forgot to mention, if you have anything in the hierarchy uh, right here, go ahead and delete all that stuff. You don't need any of that. Okay, so we got our Beforia plugin here. So go down to Beforia Prefabs. First, we're going to pull in the AR camera. And then we're going to get the image target and make that a child of your AR camera. Okay, we should be good there. Okay, so now go to AR camera and you have your app license key. Go to your develop section of Vuforia.com and then you're gonna have to add license key. It's gonna, let, have to, it's gonna have you create one. So copy and paste that. And paste that right into there. So we're good there now. Um, go, go back to Vuforia and we're going to have to create um, an image target database. So I'm going to put a link to this picture in the description, but you want to grab this um, picture of a maze right here. This is what we're going to use for our image tracker, and it's what we're going to use to actually build the maze from. So grab that tracker picture, and then we're going to go to Target Manager, go to Image Targets, and Add a Target. And then find that picture. I think I called it, yeah, Maze Tracker. Let's go through here, Maze Tracker. There we go. Okay, find Maze Tracker. Just pick an arbitrary width. Uh, I'm going to go 10. Oh, uh, well, I already have this in there, but okay. All right, now that your tracker's in there, I'm going to go to Download Database and then hit Unity Editor because we're downloading a database for Unity 3D. Alright, let's see. Grab that package you just downloaded, put that on your desktop. Actually, that's probably bad advice. My desktop is very cluttered, so maybe don't put it in your desktop, but regardless, put it somewhere, find it, and then drag. Wait, hold on. Click on uh, Assets and drag this into your Assets folder. Import all that, very good. Okay. Now, let's go to image target, hit image targets, and then, yep, maze tracker, very good. Now we got our maze tracker in there. Actually, let's unchild the image target real quick, and let's move it in front of our AR camera. So we should have just to make sure it's kind of like uh, in view here. Uh, that's probably good enough. And then re put that under your AR camera. There you go. And then I think if we go to AR camera, we have to initialize the image target somewhere. I forget where. Oh. Uh, under database load behavior script, load image targets, activate. So this should be working if all goes well. So let's test it out quickly. Um, 3D object cube. Put a cube on there. Oh shit. Let's make it like 10. Just so we can see something there if it works. Sorry, I'll make this bigger if it's hard to see. And then make the cube a child of the image target. And then if you haven't already, sorry, I forgot to mention this. Print out this maze tracker, JPEG. Print that out on basic, um, you know, printer paper. And then when you click play, 
you go to AR camera, we have it set to uh, camera direction, camera default. You can either choose you know, front, back, or default. Default will pick the most appropriate one. So on your computer, it's going to choose your webcam. So assuming you have you know, a front-facing webcam on your computer, this should work. So when you click play, what? Oh, allow. OK. So when you click play, yeah. So now you're getting your webcam here. If you put the image target in front, OK. It's tracking, but our cube is a little bit too big. So let's unclick play. Go back to this cube. Let's make it um, uh, 0.5. Yeah, there we go. This should work better. All right. Maybe we should have clicked always allow. OK, there we go. All right. Now we got a cube. Oh, something's going wrong here. I think under AR camera, there is world center mode. I think we want to change it to device tracking. So if you click play, oh, come on. OK. Now our cube, once it tracks, should follow the, yeah, very good. OK, cool. We got a cube. Nice. All right. So now the next step is going to be to actually create the maze. Um, this is the tedious part, so I'm probably not going to show you all of this, but basically what you need to do underneath the image target, you just want to create multiple cubes. We're going to scale these to cover the lines on the maze. Is that big enough? Oh, that's probably tall enough. Let's see. So yeah, basically you just want to cover all of these black lines. Unfortunately, this is the most tedious part of this whole operation. So just like that. And then I found it's best to work in like one direction. So for example, um, go here, do everything in the upwards x direction like this, and then work the other way. That's, you know, I guess, the best way that I've found. So it's probably a quicker way of doing this, but I just don't know it. And then just control C, control V, or if you're on a Mac, otherwise copy and paste these um, little lines here and just keep going until everything is covered and you've got a maze created. Okay, so I'm not gonna go through that whole thing. It took me like 10 minutes, but either way, um, once you get all that done, you'll have your maze. So the next step is going to be to create a little ball. Um, let's go to, let's see, 3D object sphere. And we need to create a tiny little ball to sit inside those lines. So maybe, that should work, 0.5, hopefully. No, my, my, well, let's see if it works. Let's test it in a minute here. But um, first we need to color that so we can see it. So in your assets here, create a new material. Just call it ball mat. And then let's see. So click on the sphere. Drag the ball material onto there. And then I made mine blue just because it's really easy to see. So I'm going to do that again. Should be nice and easy to see. And then we want to um, add a component. We want to add a rigid body. That way we can give it gravity and it will actually fall down onto our scene. Let's increase the mass. And then actually, let's give it. Oh, crap. Okay, we want to give it a physics material of uh, icy so that it kind of moves fast. The way it is right now, it's going to move very slow. So let's go to file, or no, assets, import package. <sighs> Crap, I think it's under characters, maybe. Mm, yeah, okay. 
So we don't need all this stuff. Um, unclick all this crap. <coughs> Excuse me. And then go down to where it says physics materials. Click that and hit import. Now we should be able to give this ice. Yeah. There we go. Oh, you know what? Now what this means is we need to we need to give our maze, every object in our maze, we want to give it that ice um, material. So uh, hit command or shift and go down, highlight all these cubes. For me, I think I have like 60 or 70, 73. And then we're going to give them ice. Okay. So now all those should have ice. Oh, one other thing I forgot to add. We need to add a plane. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we need to give, we need to have a floor here, or else our ball is going to fall right through. So place your plane over that best you can. And move it up a little bit. That looks good. Now, actually, let's give this a new material. And let's make it white. So this way our maze is going to look exactly like our tracker, which is kind of cool, I think. I don't know. So rename this um, plan mat. And drag this onto your plane. And then same like we did with the ball, we're going to make everything white. There we go. That should be, should be good, I think. Let's just make sure, yeah. Okay. That looks good. I'm happy with that. But now we need to, um, I, know I made an empty game object, maze, and I put all of my cubes and everything into there. Um, so you can either do that or have it as a direct child of the image target there. But either way, make sure plane is in with everything as a child of the image target. The sphere is the only thing you don't want as a child of the image target. So the sphere should be, should be out here. All right, so we got all that stuff. Now what do we need to do? Um, let's click play and make sure our ball doesn't fall through. Oh crap, it already fell through. All right, uh, here's what we're gonna need to do. So hit sphere and hit add component, uh, new script. We're gonna have to do a little bit of a, a little bit of C sharp here. So let's call this ball script. And then open up ball script, and then I'll pull up uh, mono develop. Oh, you know, one more thing before we do this: we need to have we need to have a spawn point so that the sphere spawns from a particular area. So hit three um, D object cube and where do we want this to fall in? Um, I think we want it to fall in right there. Yeah, sure. Okay, so on this cube, um, we don't want to add any materials to it. Uh, we don't want a box collider. We actually don't want a mesh. We don't want this thing to be showing. So let's remove this component. Remove that. And let's remove the mesh render as well. So basically, all that we have there is a point. Okay, I apologize for this, but I had to switch computers. My screen recorder was giving me problems. I tried to record this like six times. It didn't work. So here's number seven on a different computer. Hopefully, it works out well. Um, anyway, so from here, I believe we need to do a little bit of C sharp and. Um, we're gonna be able, we're gonna make it so that this ball can uh, respawn. So go to your sphere and add a component. Go to new script. Um, it's called ball script. I laughed at that like the first couple times, but anymore it's just not funny. Um, go to assets. Uh, hit your ball script. Open that up. And we're gonna first declare two public variables. Uh, first one's gonna be the plane, and the second one's gonna be um, the spawn point. So public game object uh, plane 
and then go public game object um, spawn we'll call it spawn point all right now we need to create a reference to those which easiest way is going to your sphere okay yeah now drag your plane here plane wants a plane game object spawn point wants your spawn point game object so drag those two in we should be good there now the idea is from here um, that we want to say uh, if the ball goes below the plane by say 10 units uh, we want the ball's position to become that of the spawn points position so it respawns and the game keeps continuing even if the ball falls off the maze so let's do something like if the uh, y position of this ball is less than the y position of the plane um, let's go minus 10 units so if it's 10 units below the plane uh, then we want the we want this sphere's position to equal that of the spawn point the spawn points transform position okay what did I do Are you serious ah oh, oops yeah, so transform position is a vector 3, but uh, for this line here, we're only accessing the Y portion of the vector 3. So save that, and then oh, before we click play, uh, we need to make sure, so expand your image target here. The Well, you know what? Put the cube, the sphere, and the plane. Make these all children of your image target. Come on. Okay, there we go. Now when we click play, everything should work in theory. Okay, as long as it sees the image target, which it's not right now. Come on. Worked on my other computer. Okay, there we go. Alright, good. So the ball's in the maze, we can move it around. It's hard to play uh, at this angle, but if you build it to like Android or iOS, it's much, much more fun to play. Okay. Anyway. Um, if you've never used Unity before, um, if you hit build settings, as long as you have the these modules installed, whenever you install Unity, you need to install either the iOS or the Android module to be able to build to, to those. Um, so you can switch your platform to Android or iOS. If you're building for Android, that should just work and build out to your phone, as long as you have your developer settings kind of turned on on the phone. Uh, if you're building to iOS, you need to download Xcode, and um, when you hit build and run, um, you're gonna have to go through Xcode before it'll go onto your phone. It'll make you sign up for like a temporary developer account, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Just follow the prompts, and it'll it'll work as expected. Um, now, if you want to build this uh, for Google Cardboard, it's very easy through Vuforia. If you go to your digital eyewear behavior script, uh, hit video see-through in this drop-down, and then you can choose either generic cardboard or uh, cardboard V1. And if you hit play, you'll see that you get both uh, stereo cameras for Google Cardboard. So you can then build and run this app to your uh, Android or iOS phone, and then you can play this game through your virtual reality headset. So it's pretty fun. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you guys want to see in the next video, whether it's something related to augmented reality, virtual reality, uh, whatever it is, let me know what you guys want to see, and uh, I'll do the best that I can. I'll see what I can do. All right, thank you guys. Have a good one.